If Cersei Lannister's arc in the fourth book of A Song of Ice and Fire had to be defined by a single thing, it would be her paranoia. She serves as the central viewpoint for this book, seizing power in King's Landing and taking drastic action against her enemies. In doing so, she seems to stumble from terrible decision to terrible decision, drastically decreasing the power of herself and of her family. To quote Tyrion from A Dance with Dragons, Cersei is as gentle as King Maegor, as selfless as Aegon the Unworthy, as wise as Mad Eris. She never forgets a slight, real or imagined. She takes caution for cowardice and dissent for defiance. And she's greedy. Greedy for power, for honor, for love. While her actions seem erratic in the moment, we later learn of the single event that serves as her motivation to root out all of her enemies at any cost. In Circe 8, A Feast for Crows, the lioness dreams of her childhood at Casterly Rock, specifically an occasion where she and a friend went to visit the woods witch known as Maggie the Frog, in the hopes of gaining knowledge of their futures. Upon arriving at her hut, Circe insists upon receiving a prophecy, despite Maggie's warnings. The woods witch states that Circe will marry the king rather than the prince, and that the king will have 19 children, while Circe only has three. Maggie continues, stating that, Gold will be their crowns, gold will be their shrouds, implying not only the appearance of Cersei's children, but also that they will precede their mother in death. Despite the distressing news about her future children, Cersei focuses on two central portions of the prophecy, both of which serve as pillars of her paranoia throughout her entire life. Firstly, Maggie states that Cersei will be cast down by a younger, more beautiful queen. This serves as the primary reason for the Lannister Queen's obsessive hatred of the Tyrells, as she fears that Marjorie is this younger, more beautiful queen. The second portion of the foretelling of Cersei's doom is the focus of today's video. Maggie states that once Cersei's tears have drowned her, the Valencar, or little brother in High Valyrian, will wrap his hands around her throat and choke the life from her. Many individuals have been put forward by fans as candidates for the Valencar, and today I'll be breaking down the reasoning for each of them, as well as giving my opinion at the end. If you enjoy this, I talk about A Song of Ice and Fire theories and history every week, and you should totally subscribe. But without further ado, let's figure out who the Valencar will be in The Winds of Winter or A Dream of Spring. It's probably best to start out with the most obvious candidate first, that being Tyrion Lannister. Cersei herself believes that Tyrion will be the one to kill her in the end, and he does seem to fit the prophecy pretty much to a T. He is her little brother in two senses of the word. Firstly, he's younger than her. Secondly, his stature. And additionally, Tyrion has expressed desire to kill his sister on multiple occasions, though most of these occasions do happen after the two have parted ways under very, very unpleasant terms in A Dance with Dragons. Uh, what's more, it very much seems as though the reason that Cersei's having so much more paranoia in Feast as compared to the first three books in the series is that she believes uh, Tyrion killed her son Joffrey, and that event seems to have brought back these memories of this prophecy to the forefront of her mind. However, it's important to consider the author in evaluating any prophecy in this series. George R. R. Martin does not tend to like to play his prophecies in a very straight way. He likes to have misdirects in characters do things that are not very much expected or that might not be lining up with what the prophecy seems to mean at a first glance. And I think that Tyrion being the Valonqar does seem a bit too obvious for Martin's typical method of storytelling. And what's more, it would reinforce Cersei's paranoia as something that is good and correct, and I don't think that's the message that Martin is trying to send. So overall, Tyrion is a strong candidate for the Valonqar, but I don't believe it's him. If Tyrion isn't the Valonqar, then Cersei's other brother, Jaime, should certainly be considered as a candidate. He is her younger brother in the very technical sense of the word, as she is a couple minutes older than him, and that is very much a Macbeth way of fulfilling a prophecy that it seems Martin might really like. Additionally, the relationship between these twins deteriorates massively throughout A Feast for Crows. Uh, namely, both of them think of each other as the stranger, a, stra a figure in Westerosi mythology that is a representative of death. Uh, and additionally, we see the book end with Jamie refusing Cersei's call of aid for her upcoming trial by combat against the Faith of the Seven. So the two siblings essentially have this massive falling out throughout the book. And what's more, this idea that their deaths will be interlinked is continually reinforced throughout both Feast and the earlier books in the series. The fact that one really can't die without the other, or at least so they think, is continually driven home in both prospective chapters. There's additional evidence even earlier in the text. When Bran Stark discovers Jaime and Cersei uh, in the tower just before he's paralyzed in A Game of Thrones, he specifically thinks that Jaime is hurting Cersei, 
which some fans believe is foreshadowing that Jamie will hurt Cersei and eventually end up killing her. However, there is one massive counter-argument to Jamie being the Valonqar, most notably that Maggie the Frog states that he will wrap his hands around Cersei's neck and choke the life from her. However, to counter the counter-argument, there are two ways that this could be wrong. This uh, essentially misdirect could very much be the case. Firstly, Jamie does have a new hand. He has the golden hand made for him in King's Landing. Uh, and additionally, this could kind of represent the gold, that family legacy being what brings them down in the end. And additionally, the King's hand does not have a pin in the books. Rather, there is a interlinked chain necklace of a bunch of hands that is worn as a symbol of being the hand of the king. We see that Shay gets strangled by this necklace in A Storm of Swords, and many believe that Cersei could get strangled by this same necklace should Jaime be the Valonqar, as he doesn't have two hands with which to strangle her, but that necklace does have very many hands and could tie into the death of Shay and somewhat of the relationship with their father that they had, as it was his chain for a very long time. Overall, I really like Jamie as a candidate for this prophecy. I think it's it's pretty obvious, and I think that the one thing that might be a hazard to it is how much time Martin has had to overthink it and rethink it, but by no means do I think it's a, a sure thing. While not as obvious as Tyrion or Jamie, Tommen Baratheon is another solid candidate for the Valonqar, most notably because of the phrasing of the prophecies. The Valonqar prophecy comes directly after the gold will be their shrouds, gold will be their crowns uh, line from Maggie the Frog, and that has led some fans to speculate that they are referring to the same individuals. The only little brother in this group of individuals is Tommen. And given the fact that he is a very sweet boy and doesn't seem like the type to strangle his mother, many have speculated that this strangulation might take place after Tommen is killed. There are a couple ways the boy could end up coming back from the dead, but the most likely of which seems to be Tommen being revived by Kyburn, similarly to what happened to Robert Strong, aka the Mountain. Tommen might die, and Cersei, in her desperation and potentially rage, might turn to Kyburn to return her son from the grave, though it seems as though it might go wrong, and this could end up resulting in her death. This would very much be a kind of Cersei getting come up and sway of doing things, but I do think it is a little shark jumpy for my taste, though it's far and away not the most unlikely of the theories we'll go over today. Speaking of both Robert Strong and out there theories, some have speculated that Robert Strong is somehow the Valonqar, despite the fact that he is the oldest brother of his family. Some people think that he might have Jamie Lannister's hand, which honestly, it's not impossible, but I don't see why the mountain's hands would be cut off and one of them would be replaced by Jamie's. His head is cut off and sent to the Dornish, but his hands are fine and intact when his corpse is sent to Kyburn. But the thought is that Jamie loses his hand and then is treated by Kyburn at Harrenhal. Kyburn then accompanies the Kingslayer to King's Landing and ends up working on the mountain. The thought being that this Robert Strong could be a Frankenstein's monster with body parts from multiple individuals and could eventually use Jamie's hand to strangle Cersei, uh, being a Valonqar, not necessarily through him being the Valonqar, but through literally using the Valonqar's hand. Some have also used the Valonqar prophecy as further justification for a book Clegane Bowl, uh, most notably the fact that uh, Gregor Clegane's little brother Sandor could be the Valonqar. Should he be retrieved from the Quiet Isle where he's currently digging graves, I could make a theory on that someday. I'll link to a great one in the cards, uh, but overall the thought is that the Faith could use the Hound as their champion, and if the Hound were to defeat Robert Strong in single combat, he would effectively kill Cersei. Some believe he would be the executioner himself. I think this would be a more metaphorical sense if Clegane Bowl were to happen, which I definitely don't think it will in the books, and I kind of hope it doesn't. Uh, but overall, that is an idea that has been circulating for uh, the better part of a decade at this point, that Sandor Clegane could fight on the behalf of the Faith and kill Cersei through causing his big brother to lose her trial by combat. I've got two more Valonqar theories, both of which are long shots, but I ask you to bear with me. The first of these is Osni Kettleblack. Osni Kettleblack is a knight who is made after the Battle of the Blackwater, who is uh, seduced and used by Cersei throughout A Feast for Crows in the hopes of kind of tarnishing Marjorie Tyrell's reputation. Towards the end of the book, he's sent to the High Sparrow to essentially say that he has despoiled Marjorie and hopefully get Marjorie imprisoned. 
However, he is tortured and he admits to Cersei being the one who put him up to it, and additionally admits to Cersei ordering him to kill the previous High Septon, which he did. The idea with this one is the fact that maybe she won't necessarily be killed directly by someone strangling her, but this Osney, this youngest of the Kettleback brothers, is the reason for his down their sorry, her downfall and would be metaphorically strangling her. What's more, he could be executed, and this could very much mirror the uh, historical events surrounding the death of Aemon the Dragon Knight, as once he's executed, it is unlikely that his brothers, the other Kettleblacks, will be very happy with Cersei, and she might need defending from them. The idea there is that Aemon the Dragon Knight was slain defending his sister and potentially lover, if rumors are to be believed, from two aggrieved knights. The idea here is that Jaime would do the same, that he would die defending Cersei from both of the Kettleblack brothers, as she very much fills the same role as Nerys in this story. Uh, however, I don't think this is quite likely, as it would go back on a good portion of Jamie's arc, and Osney Kettleblack is a long-shot candidate regardless. The last one, my favorite of these theories, and by saying favorite, I do not mean the one that I think is the most likely, I mean my favorite. I have full-on Stockholm Syndrome for this theory, as I have covered it before in my April Fool's Day video this year, but Victarion is 100% the Valonqar, because I think that if Cersei marries Euron, which I think there's a non-zero chance of, go watch my Euron's Bride video if you want to see more of that, uh, I think that he very much could fill this role perfectly. Specifically, the prophecy line before the Valonqar prophecy states that once Cersei's tears have drowned her, all of this will happen. So the thought here is that Cersei will be out of power in King's Landing, she will be in tears, she will have been cast down by a younger, more beautiful queen, most likely Ariane Martell. She would be drowned. She would take to the faith of the drowned god. She would join the Ironborn, essentially. Or at least she and Euron could go back to Castle Rock and rule the West from there. Once this happens, the idea is that Victarion is the Valonqar. He is the younger brother of Euron, and he would be mirroring, mirroring, excuse me, uh, the way that quote unquote Euron made him kill his previous wife, as Euron seduced Victarion's third wife, and because of this, Victarion strangled her to death. Victarion is obsessed with getting revenge on Euron because of this. It's the main, like, kind of thought that occurs to him throughout many of his point of view chapters, and this could be how he takes his revenge. Victarion, serving Daenerys, could sail to Cashley Rock and end up strangling Cersei to death as revenge for what his brother did to him. Overall, I like this theory a lot for Victarion. I don't love it for Cersei's arc, but I just, I, it's, uh, it's more likely than I wish it was, which is, I think it's like, I wish it was a 0%. I think it's like a 1% or 1.5% likelihood of happening. Overall, though, this, this theory has just been kind of stuck in my head for months, and I'm happy to talk about it again because you never know, and the stump that was promised shall someday ride again. He shall sail the Dothraki Sea. Before we wrap up, I'm going to say something and go completely out on a limb here just to maybe justify what the show did in case that was a note from George, which, dear God, I hope it wasn't. The only thought that I have as to how the show could be justified in a Valonqar prophecy with Cersei and Jaime being crushed by a bunch of bricks in the right keep is that Magor is the Valonqar. He is the younger son of Aegon the Conqueror. He is the little brother, ironically, despite the fact that his brother is much smaller than him. And oh, he was the one to build the Red Keep. So if this is true, perhaps it's like, oh, Jamie led her to his her death and his death, but Magor killed him. It was both Valonqar. Ah, prophecy. I don't, I really, really hope that's not the route that's going to happen. But I think that if the if D and D were trying to justify their actions to any book reader, maybe that's the route they take. I don't know. I just I'd had the thought that Magor is the Valonqar and really wanted to share that. So what do I think? I think it's probably Jamie. I think most likely the idea that Jamie is going to be the Valonqar is pretty well supported by the text in many, many, many different portions. I do think that Martin could end up complicating it a bit, making it like Jamie's fault, but not technically. Uh, him strangling Cersei to death, but overall I do think Jamie is far and away the most likely of these candidates. I don't dislike the Untommon theories, though. I think they've, they've grown on me quite a bit. 
So, who do you think is the Valen car? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. While you're down there, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, like I said at the top of the video. I really appreciate it, and I make new A Song of Ice and Fire content every single week for you. I will be coming out with more videos in the near future, and I really appreciate any support. It helps, helps me feel good, and helps me feed my cat. Uh, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you, like I said, in the near future. Goodbye.